Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason, not Jason, but Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. I uh, just want to say thank you to those of you that have wished me a happy birthday and for those who uh, have sent me birthday presents via PayPal. Thank you very much. You know who you are. I very much appreciate it. It's, uh, it's very lovely. I do. Um, yeah, it's nice. And... Just to let you know, I have a Facebook page specifically for this podcast. So if you just go to Facebook and put in, let me bore you to sleep, and uh, should come up. You can, the benefit, I mean, you can join my normal Facebook pages as well if you want. The benefit of the Let Me Bore You To Sleep is I only post episodes from this podcast on there, as opposed to the other Facebook pages where I post all of my podcasts, and those are for you. Oh, a little bit of gas there, sorry about that. Uh... So I'm 49, 49 years old, and one day, so it's now Wednesday the 28th of August, 2019. It's what is it? One twenty-three a.m. So, for those of you that listen to this regularly, you know I kind of sometimes I'll just talk about nothing for an hour. Sometimes I talk about something for an hour. Sometimes. I tell stories, sometimes I talk about my life, sometimes I just make up stuff about my life, and more recently I've been trying to increase my repertoire uh, as far as different things I can do. Um, Don't say, we know what repertoire means, what, what I mean is... I'm trying to expand the type of recordings and recently I had I was reading out of my book of knots and then a few days ago I was reading out some fun facts about the UK the UK history so I've started to get myself a little collection of books they're all cheap they're all like two pound three pound each and I'm going to dip in and out of each of those books every now and then and give you a few fun facts uh, as well as just some facts and so today I got a book about birds and I also got a dictionary so I'm going to be reading I'm going to be reading out of the dictionary not today because I couldn't even handle that boredom I was I just the thing is with a dictionary I suppose some dictionaries would have pictures wouldn't they because that would make it more fun for me whilst I read but that's more of an encyclopedia, isn't it? So I'll look at getting some encyclopedias that I can 
talk about what's in the picture. It just it makes it a little bit uh, easier for me rather than with a dictionary just looking at a bunch of print. And uh, but and I am going to be going through them and I'm going to be marking off each thing that I talk about so that I don't repeat myself in future episodes so there so um, I'm going to talk uh, I'm not going to do the dictionary today that might be tomorrow might be another day and let's face it it's a dictionary so it's it's going to last me for years probably I'll, pro- I'll probably still be reading out of that dictionary and uh, in 10 years time which is going to be wonderful so I'm going to build up this little collection of books specifically for these let me bore you to sleep recordings so I can dip in and out talk about what I'm reading what I'm looking at and and at the same time as being boring I might actually learn something new because I'm picking subjects that I've got no interest in so I'm getting these books it's not totally true I do like birds but I'm not I'm not a I'm not a bird watcher as such I'm more a bird seer I see them, but I don't really watch them. You know, I'm not a really. I'm not a bird voyeur. Because you think about it, sometimes you see, you see people that bird watch, and they, they like got these boxes set up with curtains, and they hide in, with cameras and telescopes and. But they're hiding behind a curtain. Then that's dodgy behaviour. Anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to be getting more books on like astronomy, maybe astrology, maybe on shipbuilding, uh, golf, <laughs> maybe. Um all the stuff that I've not really that interested in but I'm, and I need to I can't keep saying this but I think it's it's important to mention that I'm not mocking the subjects um, everything is interesting to someone so you know bird watching is a passion for probably millions of people around the world I absolutely love it and I do love birds but as I said I'm yeah I do, you know I just see them when they're there I don't I don't watch them you know I'm not watching I'm just I think it's a little bit different I'm not um Although, when I was young, my stepmama, the first stepmama, she was a really good artist, probably still is, but she's really, really good at drawing. Uh, and she liked to draw birds. So, like many young children I was let's say nine or fourteen fifteen let's say I was nine because that's the time I'm thinking of about nine maybe ten and I wanted to be like her and she said well you're male there are limits and I said, yeah, no, what I mean, I, I want to be able to draw. I want to be able to draw like you. And she said, unfortunately, you don't have any talent. No, she didn't say that. 
she said uh, I think she was quite encouraging <clears throat> but uh, I didn't have what I would class as the natural drawing ability it is something that took a lot of uh, focus for me to do didn't, didn't really come natural I think the things I like to really draw was spaceships and cars with rocket launches and stuff and I think that was more to do with like James Bond and watching Logan's run on television and uh, I suppose st st you know Star Wars and stuff like that kind of got my juices flowing and uh, but we had a quite a big garden where um, I lived as a from the age of about nine to fifteen and or eight and a half to fifteen something like that so it's quite a long quite a long time but I suppose not really if you think about it but at the time it seemed to drag on somewhat so I had this, this I didn't have the garden the garden was there I really didn't didn't um, I didn't contribute to the garden existing it was you know it was there when, when we moved in you know I didn't have some kind of uh, weird powers who moved in and I thought let there be a garden and a garden arrived just out of nowhere nothing nothing like that happened although I did used to think I can control the weather but I might have talked about that before I remember when I went to high school and uh, and that was at the age of 11 And I remember going around to all my teachers and telling them that I could control the weather. I could make it rain at will. I could make it windy. Not just in my, under, in my underpants. I could, so I could control the weather. Now in hindsight, I'm not sure that I made a particularly good first impression and uh, yeah I don't think it did me any favours in the long run but there you go what you, you know it is what it is as they say in um, places where they say that so we had a garden and there was a peach tree, peach, yeah, peaches, and I wasn't a big fan of peaches. Um, I like peaches in a crumble, and for those that don't know what a crumble is, I don't, I don't mean... Uh, like rubbing it between your hands like a like a bogey until it's dry and crumbly what I mean is I it would be put into it's kind of like a I suppose a crumble is kind of like a pie but without pastry but underneath it's uh, it's on top it's crumble um, which is um, made of crumbly stuff and I'm not sure what else but yeah it's really nice and really I think the the 
best part of a crumble, whether it's an apple crumble or peach crumble or you can have quite a few different types. I don't think I ever had a banana crumble. But then I never ice skated wearing stilts. So there's lots of things I haven't done or perhaps wish to. And I sure we had did I say peach? Pear peach not peach. What's that red fruit? It's horrible. Horrible red fruit. Um, plums. Yeah, did I say I had a peach tree or plum tree? It was plums. I had plums. And okay, they'd, sometimes, I'll admit, they've tasted quite nice. If it was a real kind of... Either it's going to taste nice or it's really not. It's kind of like have a have a drink by your side of you just in case and a bucket. You know, it's kind of but some but once it was inside the crumble with some I guess sweetener which is probably sugar, I guess. Oh, oh it's lovely. Proper nice, proper nice. So we used to have that because my step mummy was a really, really brilliant cook. Uh, bake, baker, cook, everything. There's nothing she couldn't do. And uh, I say that, but she wasn't great at flying jets. It was one of the one, one things. She was kind of average at flying jets. Rarely crashed, but you know what I mean? Just touch and go. So, um, but you know, with the baking of cakes, it's really, really good at that. Look, good at lots of things. Um, and I wanted to be like her because I've never been, I don't mean this, I'm, I'm going to talk from a perspective of someone that was born in 1970 and lived through the 70s and the 80s. Never been particularly manly, and I realise that's possibly a weird statement. But the you know like that testosterone-filled, you know, and even like young boys wanting to play football and um, into cars and you know this is before video games came along this you know it was there was very much a uh, a boys and girls kind of uh, activities that would occur and I prefer to be with girls I preferred to spend time with girls, although I didn't always get an opportunity to do that. So, which meant I kind of had to put up with being around boys. But I didn't really relate to them because I wasn't, just wasn't really interested in the stuff and the. Uh, like the showing off and trying to be macho and trying to be tough and all that kind of silliness didn't really appeal to me. It wasn't. It's kind of, I'd already done that. I did that when I was a kid, when I was little. I grew up in a very rough housing estate in uh, Newcastle. So I was a Geordie from the age of what two till about five or six 
so I kind of I grew up in a like a rough a rough place and then I moved somewhere soft where people were like trying to act tough but they weren't so that I kind of wasn't that impressed it didn't affect me if that makes sense kind of I didn't find other children scary it was it was kind of laughable and then when I got older high school everyone started growing up and having muscles and I was still little so everyone started, kind of was stronger than me it wasn't fair nah 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 I am guarantee I'm fatter than them now so um, we had this garden anyway but I want to read out of this book I don't want to spend the whole time talking about the garden we had I had a bad experience with the drawing bit because in the late 70s early 80s we used to have quite uh, stable weather um, like the seasons were a bit more reliable I think as winters were cold and we had snow never at Christmas if you want snow at Christmas go and live you go to Wales or Scotland you're pretty much guaranteed in certain places you're guaranteed snow every Christmas morning and I'm going to do that one day because in my entire life in my memory I mean it might happen when I was really little but I don't ever recall waking up on Christmas morning with snow I was going to say like floating down on my face but that would mean that I ever had no roof or I was homeless so I don't want it to snow then but I've never known it to snow on Christmas morning or Christmas day there's been times when there's been snow on the ground which is beautiful but it's not the same you know it's kind of having snow on the ground as opposed to having snow flowing down you know like snowing I don't know it's, it's a little bit like being off a of chocolate when you've got diarrhea you know it's like it's not the same it's you know I'd rather offer me chocolate when I'm feeling hungry for chocolate well, I don't, maybe that's not a good comparison um, I was going to say it's like asking someone that's having an asthma attack to blow up a balloon no it's not the same here is it I was trying to think like something that's incongruent you know it's not the same it's not it's uh, yeah it's not the same like it's like having oh, just dropped the uh, the lead has just dropped from the table sorry about that put it back on there nice and quietly I suppose like having your Christmas dinner or your birthday dinner or whatever dinner it is and there's a big difference between the food when it's on the table and you're hungry and you've been waiting you've been kept waiting for far too long but it's family so you can't say anything you can't complain to the waiter because the waiter you know it's family because you'd like to complain you'd really like to complain when you it's like you know what I know we're related but do you know how hungry I am you said dinner was going to be a one it's now five to two I'm furious 
this. Mother is unacceptable. I demand satisfaction. We duel at six in the morning. And yes, yeah, so it would be Be like having your dinner in front of you and then seeing the scraps poured into a bucket of the leftovers. And although it's still the same thing, the snow on the ground is a little bit like that scraps of food. Except much more beautiful unless the scraps of food are being decorated with tinsel or something I don't know some candles oh you know what I saw the other day oh, I can't tell you I saw I might have mentioned this but I'm going to mention it again I saw a little deer like a little it wasn't a rain but it might no it wasn't a reindeer it didn't have uh, a sled or anything, or sleigh. But it was basically, I was walking down the road with Andre. Now, I don't know if I had Andre in my arms or I was just dragging him along on his lead. Um, so I don't remember, but we where I go where we walk or where sometimes I carry him or sometimes he walks it depends how he feels really especially in this kind of weather he gets a little bit too hot for him which is weird okay get this this is for Beth I'd like to hear about Andre he today He's doing something that he's never done before, as far as I know. Of course, I don't know what he gets up to when I'm not here, but uh, I couldn't find him. I looked, didn't know where he was. He's got about six different... How many places does he sleep? So he's got underneath the chair, the big black squeaky chair. He sleeps under there sometimes. He's got a carrier bag. It's the white... Um, is it next carrier bag that he's had for ages he likes to sleep in there sometimes he's got his brown and um, sickly green bag which is generally it's his favourite place but he's not interested in that at the moment and this is all in the living room and he's got some <laughs> behind the door because I had the door propped open by a, it was a cat, uh, like a cat box, uh, like with a little scratch bar and a ball, like a, a string and a ball on it and a flat top and it's hollow so he sleeps in there sometimes. So that's four. So one, two, three, four and the fifth place he sleeps in here is behind the door in a pair of my um, oh, I suppose the tracksuit bottoms but I was using them as lounging around pyjamas but my belly destroyed them it got to the point where the elastic in them just said no more that's it. it literally one day was fine the next day they were just falling down and with my ego I thought yay I've lost some weight no the elastic's gone there's a big difference my boy my little podgy pudding okay so I put them down there for him and so I can't use them anymore 
and he sleeps in them because he can sleep in he likes to sleep in the leg bit like a little tunnel for him so that's what one two three four five places here in the bedroom he's got three places that he sleeps the main place is on my bed uh, and he could be under the quilt on the quilt or inside the quilt so I don't even know when he's there I mean the cu a couple of times I've gone to lay down and didn't even know he was there and he pops up and made me jump and sometimes this is this isn't I've got a pile of dirty washing we all have dirty washing it's basically clean washing that's been used it's not it's not dirty I mean it's not like uh, you know fumes and smoke coming off of them and flies usually there's not that and sometimes he sleeps in there he burrows into it or you know that's usually more in the winter than in the summer and I've also got this box that I got um, I think it's a box I got my punch bag in and I cut the top off and the sides off so he can climb into it and I put some other old clothes that I can't wear anymore because I've, for some reason I I had a medium sized t-shirt I still had it why I haven't been able to wear a medium sized t-shirt for well, it might be okay it might be large I, I have to have extra large t-shirts XL or XXL, whatever, but this was like, and it was tight, which looks good if I if I look in a mirror. The I've got this little bathroom cabinet with two doors that open, and there's some mirrors in both of them, and you can basically see from my head down to depending on where I'm standing down to probably nipple area about you know just about that area middle of my chest or whatever well probably they're sagging a bit aren't they with age all, all, bo all boobies do but um, but I look quite fit from that from that angle forget the face but shoulders and you know the chest I look especially if I've got a tight t-shirt on I look like I'm quite muscly then I look in a full length mirror it's like um, you ever been to those crazy fairs where they have those magic mirrors like those fun fun mirrors it's almost like that like I've gone from looking at a normal mirror to like a, a comedy version of myself yeah crazy. they call them crazy mirrors so if you've if you've got a belly not you me for, for, for me this is just for me uh, yeah I only speak from my own perspective because I've got no issue with people how people look I've got no interest in how anybody looks apart from myself um, and I think everyone perhaps the whole world would be a bit better off if we did that Instead of judging each other, I'm going to judge myself though if I want, because I don't. I want to look better. I think I look all right for my age. And someone said, "Oh, what are you 55?" Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I look all right for 49. I think. I definitely don't sound 49 I don't think I look 49 at all but then what does 49 look like I mean you know realistically I do look 49 because that's what I am I look my version of 49 
do wonder what I'm going to look like when I'm 70. I kind of think, oh, I wonder. Because my dad is 73. He was 25 when I was born, I think. 24, 25. And I'm 49, so whatever that makes him. 70, about 73, isn't it? 74. And I don't think he looks that old. You think about it, 74, 75, 80. He don't look anywhere near 80. You know, not in my 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 image of an 80-year-old. is elderly, but... That was the old image of an 80-year-old because my image of a 49 year old was old when I was younger but now I kind of think oh, when I'm breathing everything kind of still works and you know I do weights every day I do a little bit of exercise not so much cardiovascular which would be it's something I'd like to do more of I've got a friend called Brooke and she she told me she rides a bike like a when she's watching telly I thought well, that's dangerous but it's a stationary bike and that's what I'm perhaps thinking of trying to do in the coming year get myself a stationary bike and maybe spend an hour a day on that whilst watching you know, early evening television it's just you know because I'm quite lucky um, of course no one knows what's going to happen but genetically I've got a very old family on my mum, my nan's side, they all live to be very old, you know, generally like 90s at least. Not all of them, but and I kind of every single one of my aunts and cousins, uncles, aunts, cousins, everyone, they're all alive apart from the my nan's generation all the ones that are in their 90s all the younger ones that are now getting towards 80 still alive still kicking still punching and doing karate and blowing whistles or whatever they do so I think so if I'm still going to be around when I'm 80 or 90 still doing this by the way I'm never going to stop this you're stuck with me. Can you imagine? Can you imagine spending the next 20 years or 30 or... What am I, 49, 50, 60, 70, 80? I reckon... As long as my voice still works... And... I probably wouldn't need... I don't know. I reckon I could probably still do this when I'm 80. I may not be able to record as many recordings and as I do, like in a year. At that age, I might want to do other things. But yeah, I think it'd be cool. I'd be still doing this. <laughs> still be reading out of the dictionary. And when you consider we're 40 minutes into this thing and I've not even read anything out of this bird book these books are going to last me for years and I'm going to be getting a new one every week probably just sort of some random facts and you know book of maps or book of flags you know those kind of stuff uh, I'll be describing the different flags then I get carried away and I start talking about stuff and 
I forget what I'm doing and uh, start talking about plum crumbles and such like one weird experience and I might have mentioned this I have mentioned it before but maybe not in these on this podcast uh, not this episode but even the whole podcast you know I've probably mentioned it in uh, other things that I've done it was I think I had chicken pox which was brilliant because it meant I didn't have to go to school I'd have, I, I know it sounds silly and that sounds an exaggeration but I'm not even joking here I would have took any any illness I'd have had an amputation if, if I needed to have time off, work, off school I really didn't like school really really didn't um, so I would have been happy anything to get away from school so I was so felt so lucky and blessed when I got a chicken box. And because I had three brothers, two who were older, it was just bound to happen. You know, my oldest brother got it first, then my other brother, older brother got it, and then I got it. And every day when they had it probably for about five days before me, every day I'd be looking, it's like please I remember I used to go in when no one was around and I started rolling around in my brother's bed just to try and catch it. You know, I'd run around, walk around in his underwear, just like, please, just don't want to catch, catch it so I don't have to go to school. And when I got it, it wasn't quite as pleasant as I thought it was going to be. It was, it was not very nice at all, really. But I still thought, you know what? I'm scratching all the time and I don't really feel particularly good, but it's still better than being in maths. So, there you go. I, but I enjoyed it. And I think, I think it was snowing at the time. So, I was laying down on the floor those were the days where I didn't have to sort of plan getting up and now if I'm on the floor I kind of have to think well how the hell am I going to get up now I have to roll over onto my side and put the weight onto my left arm and then put the weight onto my right arm try and make my way to my knees I put my knees in front of me and then one foot at a time try and like push up and uh, didn't have to think about that when I was a kid I just I almost floated it was, it was like you know I'd be laying down on the floor I want to stand up and suddenly I'll be stood up just it just happened so quick and uh, anyway I was lying down on the floor and I was drawing Buck Rogers now for those of you that may not know who Buck Rogers was um there's a few different answers for that first of all he was a comic book like a I suppose like a, a hero like Flash Gordon he didn't have special powers but he he was a hero kind of a bit like the A-Team but nothing like the A-Team uh, the synopsis really was it was called Buck Rogers in the 25th century and he was I think he was frozen geopanetically or whatever it's called 
peanut but no not not in a peanut butter jar he wouldn't fit would he but he was yeah like Walt Disney um I think Walt Disney throws his bum throws didn't he freeze his bum or something gyropenetically and so that I don't know I forget but and he woke up about and I think he was in space yeah so for some reason and they discovered him and he woke up like uh, 600 years in the future and his name was Buck Rogers now I don't know if Buck actually uh, was short for something because doesn't really sound like a real name does it if I'm honest no offence to anyone out there called Buck but it's not a real name it might be maybe it is I mean Buck That's isn't that a male elephant or something isn't it Buck maybe his first name is Buccaneer Buck in Buckaroo? I don't know. Bucket and Spade? I don't know. So he woke up, or he was defrozen, and uh, I don't, I might, who knows? It might have been, he might have been there for years in a freezer. Someone went in to get some ice cubes and thought, oh, there's a man in there. I don't know. I don't really know. I mean, you know, I don't think it was based on a true story. So he was on this TV show and it was brilliant. And it was, it was all scientific, you know, it was all space and uh, there was oh, he had a sidekick called oh, what was his sidekick called it's like a little robot like a little android that used to go biddy 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 what's up buck biddy 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 like that and so basically the this this little android was two in one. So I had two different characters. There was a biddy 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 and the what's up book and uh his name might have been Biddy. Biddy 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 biddy. I forget, I forget. It was a little bit similar to the Star Wars Android, you know, the little um, round one, not the the gold one, but the other one. Yeah, it was different. Bidi 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 bidi. You're cold, Buck. I know. I've just been thawing. So I don't know. It's um, so he had that, and he had a, a lady who I think was his love interest. I think I've got this very faint image of her being brunette, but on her head anyway, and. And wearing white, like a white suit, not not suit as in being a lawyer or something, or an accountant, or well, you know, going to a wedding. But it was more like a, I suppose, like Star Trekky kind of suit, you know, a bit too tight to be comfortable for work 
that's what I used to think. I know that my brothers probably used to really like watching it and thinking, whoa, whoa. And I was thinking, it looks uncomfortable. I mean, she's got to sit down in there all day, you know, doing stuff. That's got to chafe. My brothers were going, whoa, whoa, chafe, whoa. They, they might not have been doing that, but I was always, I was always concerned. I was concerned about the uh, the well-being of people. It's, it's important to me. Like, you know, it's... Does it give enough support? You know, there's things like that. So, so she was in it, and there was other people in it as well. Probably kind of aliens. Well, technically, I, I suppose all of them was aliens. I mean, technically, we're all aliens, aren't we? I mean, everything on this planet has come from outer space. Everything. This planet is just made of meteorites and debris and stuff from other planets and solar systems and the universe just landing in to make this ball of uh, Earth. So we're kind of all aliens, really. Yes. And, uh, I think the thing that I noticed, I didn't really notice it at the time, but I, when I watched it back in the 90s, um, because I was watching this probably late 70s, early 80s when it was first on maybe 1980 you know, I was probably 10 now I used to enjoy watching it but for me it was more about you know the the, the show and the uh, the adventure and it was funny and it was the best thing on TV at the time really it was over in in England where I was living at that precise moment it was the Saturday night highlight well one of them and we depended I mean depends if we had sometimes it would be the pizza poo so if I had a really nice pizza about five o'clock with lots of uh, sweet corn they used to be quite fun but you know, like 10 o'clock having a pizza poo but yeah I didn't really want to go to, into that so we would watch Buck Rogers in the 20th century bitty 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 like that now I didn't really notice this at the time I noticed it in the 90s when I was an adult the program was full of beautiful people, including Buck Rogers. I knew that I used to see pictures of him in the TV magazines, and I didn't realise he was. I wasn't really aware of heart throbs and stuff like that back then. Um, and he was a heart throb. And he was in the same league as Magnum. And they both had something very similar. They both had very hairy chests. Which I didn't I don't think I really picked up on when I was a child. But when I was in my twenties and I was watching it back because I was showing repeats, I couldn't show a repeat couldn't show it for the first time could they and with Buck Rogers in the 25th century in the 25th century I was just oh wow it was full of like skimpily clothed people men and women and Buck Rogers had his top off so much 
and he had this big hairy chest and I thought oh it's very similar to watching Wonder Woman again I watched it when it first came out and then I watched it again when I was in my 20s and it was kind of like watching it through fresh eyes because It, it dawned on me that my the type of woman the type of uh, like the perfect female in my eyes at that time when I was like growing up as a teenager and in my 20s I didn't realise it until I watched Wonder Woman in about 1994 so it was on Sky Television I was in Ireland at the time and I realised it was Wonder Woman. She was the woman that I longed to be with. And I don't know if it was the way she looked, or it's just the fact that she liked to turn, you know, swizzle around. And because I used to like to do that on a football pitch, but unlike her, there was no sparks. I didn't turn into uh, like a superhero and have a bikini on I just get dizzy and fall over but I had that connection you know had that connection and I realised it's just that little that it was like a seed was planted in a really young you know I was young when um, Wonder Woman was out when that was in the late 70s and did you hear that in the background Andre's running around now so I fell in love with Wonder Woman again in, in what 1994 and I didn't realise where my I'm not saying she's the only reason but I think I must have fallen in love with her when I was a kid when I was little she might have been my first like crush I really you know and I wanted to be with her even though I was only little and even now I've seen this yeah and by when I say Wonder Woman I'm talking about the original Wonder Woman not not the Wonder Woman in the films now I mean I don't find I think the films are good the film that she was in is really good but I don't it doesn't really do any you know she's not my type the original Wonder Woman I don't know what it is I just it's like a, I think probably a celebrity crush that's never gone away and she's about 90 now and I still no <laughs> and I I don't know it's strange and another thing I didn't notice and this is when until I started watching it recently because I bought the box set Um the at the end of every episode she looks at the camera and she smiles at the end of every episode she looks at the camera and she smiles and like laughs kind of proper it's like I don't remember that so that's what's the weird thing I don't remember um, when I was a kid I don't remember all the jiggly 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 and then when I was in my 20s that's all I noticed was the jiggly jiggly and now I'm in my 40s 
what I noticed was her smile. It's almost like I'm becoming an adult. <laughs> over, t I'm maturing over time. So probably by the time I'm 70, I'll notice her personality. I'm joking. Is uh, so. Anyway, I did this picture. I drew this picture, and it was in Looking magazine, and it wasn't of Wonder Woman. I've got, uh, yeah, it wasn't of Wonder Woman. It was um, Buck Rogers, Mister Harry Chest, and but he had. He was holding his helmet in his hand. <laughs> I should explain. He used to wear a helmet. So this picture was of him holding his helmet. Probably to his chest. The lucky boy. And so his hair he just had his hair and you know he didn't have a beard I don't think he had a moustache like Magnum P.I. but I might be wrong because moustaches were quite popular in you know around that time so I drew him I drew I didn't drew him you know he wasn't actually there but I did off a picture and I drew him and I probably spent about two hours drawing his picture and I went and took it to my stepmom and I said stepmom she said when are you just going to start calling me mum she said when are you going to start calling me step and uh, she, she said I said look at this what do you think and she said, oh, who is it? I said, guess. Bearing in mind, we were all watching Buck Rogers every Saturday evening, you know, and it was like the big thing. I'm not saying that's all we talked about, but, you know, we it was a shared family activity of some stature, I would, I would argue. And uh, I said, who do you think it is? She said, is it Elvis Presley? After the funeral, I was like, I was like, no, it's Buck Rogers. She said that doesn't look like Buck Rogers. She said, uh, you're only good at dancing. I said, why? She said, well, you're no good at drawing. <laughs> so no, she didn't say that. So I. Uh, I wasn't hugely impressed with that because I put a lot of effort into it and I'm not a big fan of wasting my time unless there's a point to it so yeah I'm not really forgiven if I'm honest perhaps after 45 years I should let it go actually not 45 is it 35 30 Thirty-eight. What's about nine? So forty years. Yeah, about forty years. Forty is that long enough to hold a grudge? Is it? Should, uh, yeah, maybe I'll let it go. I've got an itchy arm. Probably talking about all that. Wonder Woman stuff. I always get itchy when I think of her. So I didn't get around to talking about my book, pocket book. So if I just go to the first book, the first uh, page that comes up. Um, mating ritual of the blue tits. Uh, no, maybe not. 
Oh, well, I was going to say, Andre, all these places he sleeps. It's, today he was sleeping behind the cooker. Now it's a really hot day. We've had two hot days and three hot days in a row. He was sleeping behind the cooker, and I thought, okay, it's it's metal. It's probably cold. He's you know. I turned the oven on to cook something. He still stayed behind the cooker, and I couldn't get him out. And I thought, is he stuck? You know, is he stuck to the is stuck to the cooker? Is, I don't know what, what's going on. And in order to take him out, I ended up having to pull the cooker out of the gap it's in, just so I could get to him. And he was trying to get away from me. It's like. And normally, he goes behind the cooker when we're playing. So he gets me to chase him, and he knows I can't get to him when he's up behind there. So then I leave him, and I go into another room, and he comes out looking for me. to kind of like play hide and seek. But he just refused to get away from the cooker behind there. It's... Honestly... Is I think he's got a problem. There's something going on with him. He really didn't want to give up that whatever he was doing behind there. So uh, that's it. Maybe he's fallen in love with the cooker. Maybe they've got a relationship going. Not quite sure how that would uh, work anatomically. So I'm going to go. Thank you for listening, and I will speak to you next time. Thank you for just being here, and remember to be kind to yourself. Lots of love. Bye.